sleep. What if I told you that there was a supplement you could take to improve both your sleep and your bones at the same time? Would you be interested? You should be. What if I told you that there were almost no risks? It's a no brainer, right? Well, stick around and we're going to discuss this supplement, the research supporting it and how we use it for pretty much all of our full service patients. Okay, so what is this magical supplement? Well, it's melatonin. But before you turn this off and say, oh, I tried that and it didn't work for me, follow me here, because you'll probably change your mind after you see this research. So let's start with what is melatonin? Well, melatonin is a neurotransmitter that is synthesized from the amino acid tryptophan. It plays a role in regulating your circadian rhythm, your awake and uh, asleep back and forth. But it is also an anti-inflammatory, it's an antioxidant, and it comes from this tiny gland called the pineal gland. Now, if you've ever looked at the pineal gland or done some uh, meditation around the pineal gland, you'll know that it is this really mysterious thing that is deep inside your brain. And it's unique in that it can actually secrete neurotransmitters and hormones into both your circulation, your blood circulation, as well as your CNS or your central nervous system uh, and the fluid that goes around there. So from a health optimization perspective, we generally will use this for sleep, right? And we've used it for years. And the question that I hear often is, does it really work for sleep? Well, the short answer is yes. And I have our first study that I'm gonna talk about here, which is just a, a meta-analysis, which is a, you know, a study of studies from 2021. And it included 23 randomized control trials on melatonin. That's a lot of randomized control trials. The dosages that they used were about three milligrams, either above or below, and it showed that yes, in fact, melatonin did improve sleep quality across the board. So our experience though, is that there's variable benefit. I see some people that see benefit, some people that don't. And because we also test genetics, we know that there's some genetic variation as far as how much people produce, how much they benefit from supplementation, genetic variations around sleep in general. So that meta-analysis shows that for the most part, people get better and have better sleep with melatonin. But again, I don't think it's necessarily for everyone from a sleep perspective. But what about your bones? Let's start with this. Why would melatonin impact bones if it's just for circadian rhythm and sleep? Well, let me demonstrate some of the physiology behind this because it's actually pretty interesting. So if we go back to 2017, there was a laboratory study that showed that melatonin decreases this thing called rank L or rank ligand. And you might have heard me use that term before when it comes to drugs because this is how some of the drugs work as well. When you do that, you will suppress osteoclast differentiation, meaning the cells that break down bone, you will suppress them from becoming the cells that break down bone rather than macrophages, which is part of your immune system. So again, melatonin will actually change the way that our stem cells are created and the way that they become either osteoclasts to break down bone or macrophages to work as part of your immune system. And we see this over and over again from these studies too, which is that it increases osteopotegrin which is coming out of osteoblasts. So it is hitting, again, both sides of the uh, bone metabolism equation, and this is what we want things to do that are going to have a beneficial impact on bones as long as they're doing it in the right way. And the conclusion of the study was that it may be beneficial for use in bone resorption-associated diseases. Pretty cool. Okay, so then another study actually going further back in time into 1999 was another laboratory study showing that melatonin induces osteoblast differentiation. So now we're on the other side of that equation, right? So we're saying that the cells that make bone are being created out of stem cells rather than the alternative. So the alternative to an osteoblast is actually a fat cell. So we're making cells that make bone rather than cells that store energy. This study also showed that melatonin, when exposed to these cells, increases mineralization. And their conclusion was that this hormone may play an essential role in regulating bone growth. Kind of cool. So what else do we know? There was a 2013 article that supported the use of melatonin in dental procedures because of the stimulation of osteoblast production and proliferation. So the dentist kind of caught on to this relatively early on and started recommending it for their patients. Now, as we start getting into the animal models around this, we have to fast forward a little bit to 2017. So in this 2017 mouse model, an animal model where they're, they're looking at melatonin, they noted that melatonin supplementation led to an increase in bone mass and reversed bone architecture 
architecture deterioration from mice that had been put into osteoporosis. And then they altered the melatonin production in the mice by uh, basically affecting the pineal gland. And what they noticed is that those mouse, those mice, had a defect in bone formation. So once you impacted melatonin, they didn't make bone as well. So just messing with melatonin independently had an impact on their ability to uh, improve bone after they were put into menopause and then also to break down and just metabolize bone in general. So it seems like melatonin is intrinsically involved in bone metabolism. Sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this content, if you would do me a big favor and just click that subscribe button, it is the easiest way for you to help me to help others. The more people that subscribe, the more this content is delivered to other people looking for information about bone health. And if you haven't yet, consider downloading our free ebook. This book is a jumping off point for people that are interested in learning more about osteoporosis through the lens in which we see it. And lastly, if you haven't signed up for our masterclass yet and you want to know more about tips and tricks about how to manage manage osteoporosis on your own, look for the link for that in the description below. All right, so at this point, you might be like, great, I'm interested in melatonin, but are there any studies on humans? And the answer is yes, actually, there's several. So this first one I'm going to talk about is a 2015 randomized control trial with 81 participants in and they did it for 12 months. So this is actually a pretty well-designed study, right? So 81 people for an entire year, and they compared placebo or a nothing to melatonin in both one and three milligram doses. And so what they saw is that for both the one milligram and the three milligram doses, there was a linear increase in bone mineral density. The one milligram group had about a 0.5% increase over the course of 12 months, which is not very significant. The three milligram group actually had a 2.3% increase, and that is significant even for this size of the study. Um, you can see this in figure one. You can see this linear increase as things go up over time. There's another figure I want to review too, and this is called figure three from the study. They measured P1 and P and CTX. So you probably know these are my favorite biomarkers for bone turnover, P1 and P being the buildup marker, CTX being the breakdown marker. And what they noted is that P1 and P didn't really change in this study, but CTX was brought down by 10%. Now, 10% is really not very much, but when you're looking at the ratio of the two, it is enough to see an improvement in the ratio between breakdown and build up. And ultimately that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to improve the metabolism of bone. And we want to leverage every tool we can, especially when there's very little risk, we want to leverage every tool we can that'll help us to do that. Now, as is usually noticed in uh, studies on hormones or neurotransmitters or anything that's affecting things from a hormonal perspective, we generally see more impact in the trabecular bone than we do in the cortical bone. That might also be because these are only done for 12 months or sometimes even less, and the trabecular bone is going to change faster than the cortical bone. But that trabecular bone is the stuff on the inside, cortical bone on the outside. And that can have an impact on what your DEXA actually shows as it changes because the trabecular bone doesn't impact DEXA quite as much as the cortical bone. So then when we look at this next study, this is from 2017. And this is melatonin combined with other things. So when we start combining other things, we have other variables. But I like this study because this is kind of realistic, right? So this is somebody who's taking melatonin, strontium, vitamin D, and vitamin K2 all together. And they call it the MSDK intervention. They, again, did this for 12 months, and they compared it to placebo. And what they noticed is that in the spine, there was a 4.3% increase in bone mineral density and femoral neck 2.2. And we typically see that with supplementation and with hormones that the spine is going to um, uh, have an impact, a greater impact on BMD faster than the femoral neck, because again, the femoral neck is more cortical and it's going to take longer to change. We see over the course of multiple years, probably femoral neck changing more eventually. Um, but again, it has to do with the rate of turnover and the different things that we're doing to the bone. Now, the other thing that they measured and noticed in this group is that they actually had improved sleep quality as well. So another little benefit here. So in conclusion, melatonin is both natural, it is safe, it increases bone mineral density. It usually improves sleep, although not always. Um, the dose that they're using in these studies is either a one milligram or three milligram dose. I've heard of and seen people and recommended even higher doses. There are no great studies to show that, you know, 10, 20, 100 milligram doses are going to have a, a, an increased impact on bone. But there are some people who are using doses of those magnitudes. 
And lastly, from a sleep perspective, I think there is going to be some natural variation in how people respond to this melatonin supplementation. Again, we see people that feel like there's no impact whatsoever and others feel like that it is pretty helpful. So take that for what it is, but know that even if it's not helping your sleep, it probably is helping your bones. If you're looking for a good melatonin supplement, just like any supplement, you wanna look for a company that is reputable, a company that does third-party testing, uh, preferably a company that actually follows the ingredients from the beginning all the way to the end of the product and through distribution or from a platform uh, that is responsible for proper storage and maintenance of supplementation. So uh, a company like Fullscript or getting it directly from the producer of the supplement. Do not buy supplements from Costco, from Amazon, from these massive online retailers because you have no idea what you're getting. Um, so get them from reputable resources from reputable companies. And that's it for this video on melatonin. If you haven't already, go to drdouglucas.com. There you can actually check out all of our program offerings, but including HealthSpan Nation. HealthSpan Nation is a program that we're launching just this week, at the time of the recording of this video. And this is where we now have hundreds of people that are coming in to help to support each other with weekly Q and A's with myself and uh, some of our other team members, a platform for information, a vault of educational material uh, that we're building up over time. And then also a community, which is totally optional, but a community where you guys can talk to each other and bounce ideas off of each other about how to optimize your health. Because remember, we are aiming for optimal, not average, and we want to support each other to be extraordinary because that's what it takes. So if you're interested in that, head over to drdouglucas.com. You can check that out and I'll see you there.